Welcome to Chapter 4, Motivational Principles as Applied to Supervision. People's behavior is influenced by factors that come from within and others from the environment around them. Some of the internal determinants of personality are physiological or come from lessons in early childhood and are now a part of the individual's personality. External factors could be from current situations, from societal values, or from a variety of other factors. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, Herzberg's motivation hygiene theory, and expectancy theory all highlight different aspects of human behavior and provide insights for managers regarding possible supervisory strategies. Maslow's hierarchy of needs focuses on needs and on an individual basis. In theory, it is, if it is known which need is the most important motivator for that employee right now, then the supervisor can develop a reward that will satisfy that particular need. Such specific rewards can lead to a strong employee motivation. Hertzberg's motivation hygiene theory focuses on only two types of factors, motivation factors and hygiene factors. Motivation factors motivate people positively. These are elements intrinsic in the job and provide job performance. Motivation factors can lead to satisfaction, but their absence can lead to frustration. Hygiene factors, on the other hand, reduce dissatisfaction when they are present, but they don't by themselves lead to satisfaction or motivation. The absence of appropriate hygiene factors does make employees dissatisfied. Supervisors should provide adequate hygiene factors, but realize that only improved motivational factors will lead to improved performance. Expectancy theory is a theory of motivation that holds that employees will, will perform better if they perceive linkages between effort, performance, and rewards. Supervisors may not want to focus so much on the rewards themselves, but on the linkages between effort, performance, and those rewards. In dealing with difficult people, supervisors must focus on the situation or behavior and not on the person themselves. During a private meeting, they should give clear examples of the problem behavior and be just as clear about what behaviors they expect. If the problem behaviors do not change by a specified deadline, then a supervisor should seek help from upper management. The ABCs of shaping behavior. In regard to employee performance, the behavior, the B, cannot be separated from the antecedents, the A, that come before it and the consequences. C that come after it. Supervisors should clearly identify what they want employees to do. Then they must make sure the employees understand the job, have the pop proper materials and training to perform the job, and know what's expected in terms of performance. Consequences, such as positive or negative reinforcement and punishment, are powerful tools in affecting behavior. The law of effect holds that behavior met with favorable consequences tend to be repeated, while behavior met with unfavorable consequences tend to disappear. Effective supervisors time consequences as well and take note of how their employees perceive them. Theory X supervisors assume that employees dislike work, avoid responsibility, and must be coerced to do their jobs. They feel that employees must be controlled and primarily are motivated by money, discipline, and authority. Theory X style managers often find that jobs are done faster in the short run, but that the employees are unlikely to develop initiative or independence. Also, supervisors may not have enough rewards at their disposal to maintain this style of management. Theory Y, on the other hand, assumes that employees enjoy their work, seek responsibility, and can self-direct. They tend to believe that employees are motivated by high-level needs, such as self-development, and can recognize where their personal objectives mesh with those of the organization. While employees of Theory Y style managers often experience their desired personal growth through increased responsibility, some managers find a Theory Y approach too time-consuming and impractical, especially when encountering employees who prefer more supervisory direction. Most suggestions for stimulating employee motivation involve either changing the things that employees do and or involving the employee more directly in determining duties and solving problems. The most involved example is job redesign, in which employees are empowered so that personal and work outcomes are positively affected. Other approaches in include job rotation, job enlargement, and job enrichment. 
There are several approaches supervisors can use to involve employees more directly in determining duties and solving problems. Participative management refers to several supervisory approaches that give employees an active role in making decisions about their jobs. There are many names for programs that use such an approach, including problem-solving teams, quality circles, labor management participation teams, semi-autonomous work teams, and management by objectives. Personality is comprised of the knowledge, attitudes, and attributes that make up a unique human being. Other determinants of personality include the physiological. Biological factors of personality are at least partly inherited. Examples include sex, age, race, height, weight, physique, and intelligence. Early childhood influences can also provide lessons, like independence, autonomy, and exploration that people carry into adult life. Environmental or situational factors, such as education, income, employment, and home, influence current and future personality. And finally, cultural or societal values, which are often in flux, influence personality as people are educated and encouraged to behave in ways that support those values. It's important to recognize human differences and similarities. It is literally impossible to understand all the unique characteristics of someone's personality. Behavioral studies suggest that people tend to be more alike than different in basic motivational needs and reason for behavior. A good balance would have a practical, consistent, supervisory approach based on similarities, adapting this to, uni to the unique needs of individuals to a limited extent. Though negative press abounds in our society, not everyone has a bad attitude. Research now points to the impact shared values has on organizations, on an organization and its product productivity. Employee attitudes, both good and bad, are contagious. Positive actions are met with positive reactions, while negative actions bring negative reactions. Positive mental attitude, or PMA, is a person who usually responds favorably to the job, people, and situations. Supervisors must always remember to focus on the situation or behaviors and not on the person themselves. Motivation is a willingness to exert effort toward achieving a goal, stimulated by the effort's ability to fulfill an individual need. Ultimately, all motivation is self-motivation. Maslow's theory of motivation suggests that employees' needs are arranged in priority such that lower order needs must be satisfied before higher order needs become motivating. Maslow states that first, people must have their biological or physiological needs met. The basic, phys basic physical needs include things like food, rest, shelter, and recreation. People cannot be motivated by other higher level needs until their biological needs are met first. On the second level of the hierarchy are, is security or safety needs. People, after their biological needs are met, need to have their safety needs met. This is the desire for protection against danger and life's uncertainties. Social or belonging needs is the third element. This is the desire for love and affection and affiliation with something worthwhile. Four is self-respect or esteem needs. This is a person's desire for recognition, achievement, status, and a sense of, of, of accomplishment. And finally, the top level uh, on my, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is self-fulfillment or self-realization. This is the desire to use one's abilities to the fullest extent. Supervisors must determine the kinds of needs that employees have and assess their relative importance in motivating those employees. Ultimately, a supervisor must structure the work environment so employees perform well because good performance leads to satisfaction of their own needs. Hertzberg's theory states that factors in the work environment 
primarily influence the degree of job dissatisfaction, while intrinsic job content factors influence the amount of employee motivation. Motivational factors in, in, in a job include elements intrinsic in the job that promotes job performance. Such factors motivate people positively. Examples are the opportunity for growth and advancement, achievement or accomplishment, recognition for accomplishment, challenging or interesting work, and finally responsibility for their work. Hygiene factors, on the other hand, are elements in the work environment that, if positive, reduce dissatisfaction, but don't tend to motivate people. Examples include working conditions, money, status, and security, interpersonal relationships, supervision, and company policies and administration.